For all the new subscribers, say hello to the Ultra Ball, and you're going to be saying hi to the Ultra Banana probably in the next video. Homeboy has uh, been in the closet for a bit too long. We got to see what the hell he's on up to. But let's talk about the top 10 cards that you can use to beat tier elements. Tier zero is Shizu, baby back bullshit. We're also going to be talking about some deck types as well. So let's dive on into it, shall we? God, the 1K Club feels so good. Ladies and gentlemen, it is your host with the most, Avery LR32 here, and I love that I changed up the intro. I told you I was going to change up once we hit the 1K ladder and destroy the ever-living boo-boo stain. We still going to keep that off of that subscribe button so we can continue to be in the goal and climb even further beyond the 1K ladder. I really do appreciate all the support. It's thanks to you that I've been able to get monetized and help pay for my medical bills with my cancer treatment and the VHL and all that that I've talked about in the past. So I really do appreciate from the bottom of my heart that, as I said in my update video, that's what all the monetization is going for towards my medical bills. And speaking of that, my well reg, the, the cancer med that I'm on, has me high as a fucking kite. So I figured now's the perfect time to feel hard and talk about the top 10 ways that we're going to beat that tier element ass. So let's go ahead and dive on into it. At number 10, we've got as Joey Wheeler would say, Neko Money King! My Neko Money King card ends your turn, bitch! <laughs> so, Neko Money King is this really just off random shit card that was played like years ago, I remember. And what it does is that it basically says that whenever it's sent to the grave, it's the end phase of the opponent's turn. Uh, or the end phase of that turn, I think it specifically says. I think it just got reprinted in OTS pack too. So, what kind of deck do you play this in? Really, I would say like anything runic, anything that doesn't play a lot of monsters, because even if you're playing like pure runic with like the three Cyber Valley cards and the um, reasoning and the monster gate, you just take out that five card engine after game one if you're going against something with the milling support. You throw in the three Neko Mana King, and then if your opponent's milling you, which they're probably just going to have to in order to make their plays because they're playing that package, they hit the Neko Mana King, they're going to resolve the chain links, and then it's the end of their turn. So even if it's like a chain link 55,001 with fucking tier, uh, they're going to have to resolve all those chains, and then it's going to be the end of their turn. You at least get the game back to your turn to try and break their board. Uh, also, I want to mention here at number nine, we have D Fisher and Macrocosmos. I'm putting them both together because they're basically both the same card. We're going to be talking about DD Ground in a little bit as well, but that has some different applications. So D Fisher and Macro are just, they're fantastic if you don't care about your grave, whether you're playing Flunder or just a rogue deck that's just literally designed to beat tier or designed to beat any deck that wants to play the mill support, which is a strategy that some people will do in a tier zero format. They'll just build a deck that's specifically designed to beat that tier zero deck. We saw that back in the day with things like tier zero. Teledad, Dark Arm, and things like that. Um, D Fisher Macro are still amazing cards at one. I wish Konami would bring them back up to three like they have in the OCG because that would be a lot of fun. I think that would be a bit toxic, maybe to a degree. Probably people would be complaining about like Mystic Mind, but I don't blame them because Mystic Mind still probably need to be thrown out in the garbage like I've said before. Um, these cards are just absolutely amazing to stop um, tier element. Anything that does mill, anything that needs the grave. That's what's great about a lot of these cards that lock you out of the grave is that a lot of decks besides the milling support use the grave. So it's kind of like you're just doubling up to beat other matchups that need the grave, whether it's, you know, a random zombie deck in the room or Eldritch or Sword Soul doesn't really use the grave too much. But still, it's the fact that you can apply that to different matchups. At number seven here, I have, well, the mill support itself. If you can't beat them, you're going to fuck them, join them, pimp. Uh, the mill support itself is disgusting. You can play it in a lot of different things. I've seen some people playing like straight earth fairies with like vernalizers and using the like new exchange of the spirit trap along with gravekeeper's trap and exchange of the spirit itself in order to facilitate plays, make the opponent swap out their, their deck with their grave. Because remember that... What a lot of people aren't using, obviously, is Exchange of the Spirit itself. But, like, that card in and of itself is really good when you combine it with, like, Keldeo and Medora, the opponent's playing with a five-card deck. You know, once both players are at 15 cards in their grave and you activate Exchange of the Spirit, pay 1,000, that's all it takes to activate the card is paying 1,000 life points, having both players having at least 15 cards in their grave. Then, because Exchange of the Spirit is face-up, you can chain a Medora and a Keldeo in your grave, banish them both. They'll be able to target five instead of three cards in either player's graveyard because Exchange of the Spirit is face-up on the field or in the grave. You can target a total of 10 cards in the opponent's grave, put them back into their deck. Then when Exchange of the Spirit resolves, you can swap the decks. Your opponent now has a five-card deck and like, what, a 35-card graveyard probably? So, I mean, minus like the cards in their hand, obviously. And then like, what, you go Foolish Barrel, dump an Aigido, and mill them out? Like, 
that's incredible. Now, is it the most consistent thing? No. Is it cheesy as fuck? Yeah. And some people are just going to be like, fuck you. I'm going to play that instead. You know what I mean? So that is something to keep in mind that I think is really hilarious. Um, and again, if you want to play something more offshoot like Naturia that plays the mill sport, go for it, pimp, because you can play it in that. At number, what is this here? 9876. I can barely count it. I'm sorry. I'm high as a kite, y'all. That cancer meds. Jesus Christ, I'm I'm seeing double here. We we on we on Mars with Neshi and MST TV. <laughs> uh, next up here is Necro Valley. Now Necro Valley is not a be all end all. We're gonna solve everything card, right? But it does hurt tier element especially well because cards can't move out of the graveyard to a different place. You you stuck. You you locked into that twelve month rent lease and your bitch ass ain't getting out. <laughs> So, uh, Necro Valley just basically says cards can't be moved out of the grave, uh, can't change types or attributes. So it says screw you to zombie world for the two people in the room that are going to play that. Um, it's, it's really good in that regard. Um, it doesn't let tier element fuse. They can still mill, but it's like, if you're milling and you're milling tier element cards, what are you really doing? You're not progressing the game set. You're making me mill, which is cute. You could possibly mill me out, but like I have Necro Valley and I'm probably already pushing your boo-boo stain in to get damage on board like cool like I, I don't really care um so really the only way that tier has a way to out this is eradicator which they got to hit it and establish a monster that meets the requirements to play it spell canceler if they're playing it galaxy cycle which i think a lot of builds are cutting that now and primeval planet which primeval planet's basically useless too because they got to send a card back into the deck or extra deck in order to trigger to pop you can't do that in necro valley sugar boo-boo bear so yeah it's it's basically just one of those few options in like game one, obviously, before they side deck. So once they side, then you kind of got to go with different options. Uh, next up here, I have Mystic Mind, specifically Mystic Mind Burn. If a Mystic Mind Burn deck goes first, then what's really cool is that they can just set up like a Silent Wobby on the tier element player's field. They can set up Mystic Mind, Field Barrier, the whole shebang. And if they're playing Goddess Skull, then Goddess Skull as well. Um, and just stall out the opponent because now... The tier element player can't mill. You can't activate any monster effects. They're definitely not going to be playing Exchange of the Spirit just to swap the decks and stuff, which it doesn't matter. The Mystic Mind player will probably have the negate anyway. However, what I don't like about it is that you basically got to win that die roll all day, whether it's at locals or regional YCS, what have you, and go first and get that set up. You know, if you can't get that set up going first, tier element's going to be licking their lips and be like, mm-hmm, you brick, boo-boo, you screwed. So... Keep that in mind that's more of an off-shot choice, but it's something that you can still keep in mind in case you just, you know, you want to troll and just be like, look, you want to play your old milling crap and take 40 minutes for game one? Fine, boo-boo. Let's just sit here and stare at each other and ask how each other's day is going. I mean, it's it's legal. It's legal. Mystic Mind's not being played a whole lot right now. Doesn't mean it shouldn't be banned. It's like how Firebrax is going to come in and out of the format. Just needs to be banned, in my humble opinion. I know a lot of my subscribers like the card. Not like trolling with it, but I'm just like, nah, it is making my tumors grow with how toxic that is and cancers. Next up here, we got Abyss Dweller. Abyss Dweller, ha, mwah. Better than Necro Valley, debatably. Being able to just trigger it in the draw phase and go, okay, no effects. And if they don't have Herald of the Orange Light, then it's like you're, you're screwed. And really, that also brings up D Shifter as well as an honorable mention because, you know, D shifter just locks both players out of the graveyard entirely. So if you're playing Flunder, then you're all set to go. You're playing Crystal Beast, you're all set to go. Um, obviously, you got to worry about Herald of the Orange Light in that regard because that's just going to trigger all their fairies and just get their gas going to the floor. Um, but if they don't have it, or if you have like a call by for the Orange Light, then you're good. Like you're you're off to the races. Abyss Dweller is going to be amazing this format. Next up here, I also have really anything runic. You know, you're playing just pure runic, sprite runic, preferably so that you don't just auto lose to cosmic. You don't care about getting milled. Your opponent starts milling your runic spells. You just play a fountain, play one runic spell. Now you're sending back three and you're drawing for days. So yeah, like I, I wouldn't be surprised if like pure runic decks started playing the mill support itself. Cause like that just helps you. Like I was kind of testing around with that for a little bit, just seeing if like I can maybe take out the cyber Valley package and throw in like a five card of Shizu engine just to kind of see if I could get more mills going faster. Cause honestly, I feel like the cyber Valley engine is going to get power creeped out just because the milling cards are just much better, but only time will tell when it comes to that. So if you play in pure runic, you do you boo boo. Next up here. I know I mentioned D shifter macro, but like I said earlier in the video, I want to talk about D 
ddground separately because it's got some different applications. The fact that ddground specifically says any monster sent to the graveyard is banished instead, just like D Fisher, your opponent attempts to like activate, let's say, tier element Shaven. You at you chain the DD ground, your opponent still has to ditch a card and still attempt to mill three, and anything that's a monster just gets banished instead. Now, if they hit like a tier element scream or one of the traps, they can still search, but it's like they're locked out of the graveyard with the monster, so it doesn't matter. What's different with that compared to macro is macro says any card sent to the graveyard is banished instead. So you can't actually mill off of macro because you can't send anything to the grave. The card specifically says send like the top power many cards to your grave. You don't have access to your grave. Whereas something like D Fisher or DD Ground, they still have to attempt to mill and just anything that's a monster gets banished instead. Next up here, I have, as I said, mentioning like decks in general. 60 card variants slash like Grimmaju variants. You know, if you're playing like a 60 card Grimmaju deck, the opponent's obviously never going to mill you out and they're just going to be hitting stuff like Gizmax or if you're playing the milling support yourself, you load up your grave for stuff like Eater of Millions for whatever it is that you want to use. Uh, shit, I've seen some builds starting to play Necroface now. Like you just don't care if you're a 60 card good stuff deck, whether it's Branded Eldritch 60 card, 60 card Grimmaju. I know Grimmaju is a random thing, but like, if you're not prepared for it, that deck can pants you like real talk. And so I feel like we're going to see some 60 card variants, kind of like what people were doing with uh, that grass looks greener to out it. They would just play a 60 card deck. It was really interesting to see the innovation that came along with that during that time. So I feel like we could see a lot of 60 card variants just to prevent themselves from getting totally milled out or to just have more engrave answers than what the tier element player could potentially have. Finally, at my number one here, I have summon limit. Summon limit counts for summons even when it's set. So as soon as the tier element player tries to pop off and make two summons, or if they get a big enough chain link, you can just go summon limit, and then they got to resolve two summons, and then they're done for the turn. Uh, summon limit, I think, is a huge sleeper in this format. Summon limit, I think if it doesn't get milled, obviously, I think if you're going first and you can get that established and it doesn't really hurt you, man, that's going to be tough for tier to deal with. Obviously not as tough as like stuff that locks them out of their grave, but I mean, like, bro, being able to lock them into two summons a turn, like, they can't, I don't really feel like that they can do much with just two summons unless, like, they have enough gas to kind of set something up to where they can pop the summon limit or, like, get it off the field and then proceed with their plays. Ha! Oh, this, this card, I'm telling you, that with, like, other floodgates in general, obviously, are, are going to be really good. Finally, at, I guess, our number zero or, like, honorable mention is the card that just beats them every time. You can take a fucking break for two months. <laughs> You can just say, screw this. We ain't dealing with all this. We finna take a break. We're going to come back in two months when Konami kind of cleans this stuff up, puts it on underneath the rug. And uh, yeah, then we'll come back and play something that's not as crazy. But then you got Kashatri or Kashatira or whatever, dropping a Shangri-La on you and just locking out your monster zone. So it's like, we don't win either way. <laughs> it's, it's it's toxic. Good Lord. Oh, okay. Hopefully my meds are going to wear off in a little bit before I got to go to work. Ladies and gentlemen, let me know. All that and more down in the comments below. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you so much for over 1,000 subscribers. We're still growing each and every day. We're like a little uh, jack and a beanstalk, I think is what the saying is, that we just keep on growing. I don't know. Guys, thank you so much for watching. I will see you in the next video.